The wetness of ice and snow governs their backscatter behavior by affecting the depth of penetration of the impinging radar waves. For its part, this wetness is controlled by air temperature and solar irradiation. Moreover, the backscatter of snow and ice varies as a function of their structural properties and the characteristics of the incident radar waves. Examples of relevant structural components include Distinct snow and ice cover layers and ice impurities such as air bubbles, water pockets and cracks. The most important attributes of the incident radar waves are their wavelength, polarization and incidence angle. Laboratory experiments suggest that 5.6 cm long C-band radar waves can penetrate freshwater ice to a vertical depth of 30 meters. However, the ice must be solidly frozen and free of impurities. There is no doubt that this depth surpasses the thickness of any seasonal lake and river ice cover found on Earth. The Canadian Radarsat and European Sentinel-1 satellites are examples of systems that operate in the C-band frequency range. These graphs illustrate the interaction of radar waves with snow and ice that are respectively dry due to freezing conditions and wet due to thawing conditions. During periods of frost, incident radar waves penetrate the upper layer of the snow and ice complex and can interact with underlying structural components such as the ice water interface, bubbles and cracks. Accordingly, the radar return signal of dry ice results from one or more of the following interaction mechanisms surface scattering, volume scattering, and or double bound scattering. The backscatter intensity will vary as a function of the roughness of the ice water surface, as well as of the size, density, shape, and orientation of the ice impurities. In contrast, thawing conditions cause the snow and ice complex to become wet and therefore impenetrable to radar waves. For that reason, the interaction is limited to the air-snow or air-ice interface and only takes the form of surface scattering. The intensity of the return signal will depend on the roughness of the observed interface. In fact, the backscatter behavior of wet ice is very similar to that of water. By affecting penetration and interaction, frost and thaw change the appearance of freshwater ice in radar images and, more importantly, alter what ice cover information is captured. Let's have a look at these two multipolarization Radarsat 2 images to illustrate this point. The image on the left was acquired under freezing conditions. It appears to contain a relatively large amount of ice cover information, because areas that are occupied by lakes and rivers display a wide range of colors from grey to purple to green to white. In contrast, the color palette comprised in the right-hand image is rather narrow, because ice-covered areas are mainly represented in black or shades of grey. This indicates a lack of ice cover information that can be explained from the fact that this image was acquired during thawing conditions. The case studies that follow will demonstrate what types of freshwater ice cover information can be derived from winter and springtime radar images.